Welcome to the TriStar Gym channel. Today's episode, I'm doing a roll narration. Me and my partner already started. We're standing up on our feet. And here we are. We're trying to take each other down. That's my first takedown attempt. Miss. Here's my second takedown attempt. Also a miss. But let's rewind and check out a very important detail. Okay, here I'm about to shoot. Once I shoot, you can see that I keep my back straight and my head up. This is so important. Okay, let's look at this. Uh, uh, these little details. My hips are down. The head is up. Let's look at the angle of the spine here. It's very important that the angle is going up. Okay, I'm shooting with my head up. I don't want my head down here and in a negative line towards my hips, okay, or, or negative slope towards my head. I don't want to put my head down to the mat. When you put your head down to the mat, you're risking getting your back taken, get, getting um, uh, um, guillotine, front choke. Now, I could get choked in this position, but it's just a lot harder. My partner has to go through more steps to get to my neck, okay, to finish my the guillotine. Okay, so watch here. There I miss. I can come up. He's not behind me. He's not on top of me. I'm not carrying his weight. That's why when we shoot, we want to shoot with our hips down and our head up, okay? Here's me in an underhook, body lock. You guys know me. Those of you who have been following me for a long time, you know I'm going to do the one move I trust the most. I'm going to go into a shuck. It never fails. Here comes a shuck. There it is. I do it all the time. You guys will see it again and again in this episode. One day I'll do a special breakdown on the shuck. Okay. Here's a leg drag. Okay. So I'm behind my partner. Let me just rewind it right here. And this is a very complicated situation here. There's so many takedowns from this position that I'm in. One that I absolutely love is the leg drag. Watch me here drop into a leg drag. There it is. I'm just going to slowly move forward here. Look how I kind of drop my weight to the floor. Okay, so you kind of drop your weight to the floor. So I was here, my my hips were up here. I just sagged them all the way down. I just throw my body weight. As I throw my body weight, I'm blocking both his knees. I'm blocking his right knee with my right hip, and I'm blocking his left knee with my left instep or butterfly hook. Okay, let's see that again. It's a beautiful maneuver. I call it the leg drag. Okay, I'm taking him down with leg drag. Let's play it nice and slow. I'm gonna go and block both his knees watch this i throw myself almost like if i was going bottom side control here's me throwing my body behind his knees my right thigh slash hip is behind one knee and my butterfly hook is behind another and i'm just throwing my hips down slamming them down to the ground okay and that's going to be the heavy weight that's going to pull him backwards now his legs are blocked so he's going to collapse and I'm right into a leg drag. Okay, that's why I call it the leg drag sweep because you end up usually in leg drag. Now my partner turtled, kind of exposing his back here. So you're not ending up in side control, you're ending up on the back. Here's another very important little detail here. My partner turtled up. Let me rewind here a bit. You'll notice that I'm I'm trapping his ankle. Okay, this is such a beautiful maneuver. You trap the ankle here. Let me get a nice X going here. I trap the ankle, but it's very important. Excuse me. I trap the ankle that I have my fore, my bicep, excuse me, on his hip, okay? Because this is the fulcrum right here. This is the fulcrum. His hip is the fulcrum. My arm is the lever. I need to have my f arm around his hip, okay? So when my arm is resting on his hip, it helps me pull up in this direction, okay? It helps me pull that ankle up. That's where the power is coming from. I'm using his hips as a fulcrum. Now, you'll see with my left hand, I'm pushing down on his head, so I was lifting up on the ankle and down on his head. This is making it very difficult for my partner to withstand my body weight. Okay, I'm actively pushing his head down into the ground. This is what I call stuffing the head. That's going to allow me to pivot behind him. He's not able to get up to his feet now. He's having a very difficult time finding his left underhook there. He's not able to get it. There's me now. You see, I went from the ankle to the thigh. Okay, I'm pulling on his hamstrings here. You could also pull on the hamstrings. There's me going back to the ankle. Okay, I'm going from the hamstring. Now I'm trying to attempt a cradle here. I'm trying to lock my hands. There it is. I'm can I, I'm putting a hook in, body locking. And that's how I force my partner to collapse from the turtle. Okay, putting so much weight on him. He's collapsing. He's carrying so much of my weight that he's just going to kind of like drop to his hips, try to regard. And now here I am in a body lock. Again, this is a very great position for the guy on top. Body locks are fantastic, especially when we're talking no gi. Okay, always look for those body locks. Here I'm in the mount. I have a cross face with my left arm. My partner here has his arms crossed. He's doing a good job protecting his center line. There's me cross facing. My partner here is going to be trying to elbow escape. You can see he's getting on his side. He's doing a very good job um, trying to elbow escape here. He's got his left elbow inside. I'm trying to take that left elbow out. He did a very good job to wedge this elbow. Okay, he got this elbow inside my knee. If this elbow gets inside my knee, I mean, he's going to escape, okay? So watch what I'm doing here to stop him. 
For him to get that elbow inside my knee, he needs to be able to have a visual contact with this elbow and knee. Okay, he needs visual contact with the elbow. He needs visual contact with that knee. Watch what I'm going to do to break his visual contact. Okay, this is a very important element to stopping somebody from elbow escaping underneath you. Look how I cross face him. I'm using the cross face, this arm right here, always using a fist. Why do we use a fist? If you put your fingers on the ground and he bridges, you can break your fingers. Okay, believe me, I've broken several fingers. Make a fist, okay? I plant that fist into the ground and then I slowly nudge him the opposite way. Okay, I'm cross facing him and I want him looking away from his knees. I don't want him having visual contact with the knee he's trying to escape. If I break that visual contact, if I use my left arm here and cross face successfully, it's gonna be very difficult for him to, look how I keep cross facing. Look, he's at it again. Now I'm using, I'm, I'm here, I'm switching to a, he reached across, so I'm switching into what we call a gift wrapped. Okay, I'm going behind his neck here, I'm gift wrapping him. That's another load of details. I'm just gonna let it run through. You guys get a nice visual here of a gift wrap. One of my favorite moves. Again, a fantastic move, works beautifully. Gi, no gi, MMA, a very universal move, something that's very reliable. Okay, if this is an MMA fight or a gi fight or a no gi match, this technique works beautifully. Here's me going into an armbar. So now I'm going to an armbar. Here's an open chain submission. If I try to finish the armbar and you can see my feet are not locked, that's what I call an open chain submission. I don't want to have open... These days, guys, as I'm getting uh, more and more years under my belt in jiu-jitsu, I almost try to avoid open chain submission. I want my limbs locked around the 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 joint I want to break okay so I rarely do open chain submissions you guys are going to see me now go to a close chain submission okay watch this here watch my right foot I want my right my right foot and my left foot locked together okay so watch this I'm going to pass my foot to the other side now that I pass my foot to the other side you'll see here I put my right foot behind this neck I'm going to rewind that here just so you guys can see it again I'm going to rewind 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 okay watch here my feet are open they're in an open chain I need to close that chain. Watch here, I slide my foot. I slide my right foot in. I take my left foot behind his neck. And now I'm gonna lift my partner up. Once I lift him up, look how I'm lifting him up with my knee here. I'm lifting him up with my knee. Now that I'm lifting up, up with my knee, I'm putting him in a triangle. Once I triangle my legs together, that arm bar is gonna be 10 times as strong. And now I have a closed chain submission. I could. A triangle choke him. It's not the right angle. I rather armbar from here. So now I'm gonna pull on that arm. Look, he won't even try to escape. This is too. It's impossible. Like it's almost. I don't want to say it's impossible. But it's incredibly difficult to escape. Okay. Once the closed chain submission is on, once your legs are locked around that limb, it's very very difficult for them to escape. Okay. Here we are. We're wrestling. I'm probably gonna try to shoot again here. Here's me tr attempting an underhook. Let's see if I go for a snap down or an arm drag. Here, my partner's doing a very good job here snapping me down, actually. He's doing a very, very good job keeping his back straight. Let's see. It looks like he might be shooting soon. He's doing a lot of good hand fighting here. There's a pump fake by me. Double change by me. Me trying to get an underhook again. Just missed. My partner's doing a good job hand fighting here. One of us is gonna shoot shortly. There's a shot, there we go. Let's check his posture here. Look, very good posture, hips are down. Head is up, this is fantastic. Let's see if he gets guillotined, I highly doubt it. Here, look, I'm sprawling, I'm not able to guillotine him. Look at this, he followed up with an underhook. This is exactly how you should do it. This is very well done, okay, let's see that again. When you miss your shots, you gotta flow, you gotta climb up the body. Let's see his level change here. He does a nice level change, head up, hips down, back straight, this is fantastic, he shoots. He misses, but he gets to that underhook. Now I limp, ar I limped arm out of that underhook, but that was a very nice sequence from him. Very nice sequence. There's me shooting. Let's see if I get in the legs here. There's a pump fake. Lots of good hand fighting uh, from my partner here. Okay, here he made a mistake. Let's see what happened there. Can I rewind? Let's see. I think I snapped him down. Let's see what happens here. Oh, he kind of reached for my leg. Okay, so watch this here. Watch this. This is a great example. Look, he reached for my leg. You can see his left hand is reaching for my leg. I snap him down. Look, his head is collapsing. His hips are up and his head is kind of down, okay? He's not in good posture. His back is bent. That's going to lead to a guillotine. Now, watch here. When you jump a guillotine, again, let's talk about closed chain submissions. If I lock my hands here, look, which I did, and I can tell you exactly what I'm going to do. If my hands are locked, 
I'm choking with the right hand. If you're choking with the right hand and you want to jump a guillotine, you have to jump first with your left leg. Okay, so you have a diagonal here. Okay, if you're choking with the right arm, you want to jump first with the left leg. Let's see which leg leaves the ground first. There it is, it's the left leg. Okay, now I have him in my control. I have him controlled in a diagonal fashion. Okay, watch this here. I jump guillotine. Now watch here. Here's the key. Okay, here's the key. If I have a night, excuse me here. If I have a 90 degree bend in his neck, okay, let's call it about 90 degrees here. You can see that his head is down in a 90 degree angle. His hips are higher than his head. His head is all the way down here. I'm going to get the submission, okay? If his neck is bent in this 90 degree angle, he's done, okay? I'm telling you, I'm going to get that submission, okay? Watch this here. There it is. It's very difficult to escape. Once you got the neck bent that far down, it's not impossible to escape. It's just really, really difficult because I had my legs locked around him and the neck already bent. It's very difficult for him to escape this. Not impossible, just really, really difficult. Okay, so let's see here. My partner was doing a very good job. Uh, pummeling is a big, strong guy, very explosive young guy and uh, strong hands, strong pummeler. There's a, th uh, a, a throw by attempt. Pummeling is so important. It's exhausting, but it's really important. Here's another shot. Let's take a look at that shot again. Now, he's attempting a guillotine on me here. This is actually pretty interesting. I want to see uh, how he's going to play this. Let me rewind this back here. We were talking about shooting. Let's go frame by frame. Okay, there's the shot. All right, let's see. Is the back straight? Or is the head up? The, hip, the head is up. The hips are down. The back is straight, guys. Please, when you shoot, shoot with a straight back. When you shoot with a curved back, there's a time where you could shoot with a curved back, guys, and there's a time where you break the rules, okay? But for most of you out there, shooting with a curved back, you're going to find yourself in a lot of trouble. Shoot like this with a back st a straight, straight back, okay? There it is. Head is up. Hips are down. I'm on my knees. I've captured the back of his neck. Uh, excuse me, the back of his knees, not his neck. Now, I'm on my knees, guys. I should be getting up off my knees right now. I should be building up. I should be climbing up to my feet. I am not here. My partner is giving it. I'm giving him an attempt at my neck okay whenever you shoot on your knees you're giving the guy a chance to finish you with a guillotine what is my partner doing i shot on my knees guess what he is now attempting a guillotine let's see what happens here you could see that when i'm being guillotined i don't want that 90 degree bend in my neck that we talked about you could see here i he does not have a 90 degree bend in my neck okay why is that well i'm not in his guard yet okay i'm gonna avoid the guard like the plague if he puts me in his guard he has a chance to tap me okay watch here look what i'm doing here I'm putting my hips over my head. Why would I go into a headstand? Because I don't want that 90 degree bend. Look how I'm lifting my hips up over my head. I'm purposely going into a headstand here, okay? When somebody's trying to guillotine you, you wanna keep your back straight. No matter what it takes, get your back straight. Do not let him bend your neck, okay? Now, I also don't want him to put me in the guard. You can see that I'm attacking his knee line here. I do not want his legs wrapped around me. I'm already attacking the knee line. There it is. You can see I'm stuffing the knee here. I'm passing the guard. When somebody tries to guillotine you, you absolutely must pass their guard. If they put you in the locked guard, you can get tapped. Okay, I want to avoid the locked guard like the plague. I'm keeping my back straight and keeping my, my uh, legs out of his guard, my hips out of his guard. Here's me climbing out of his, out of his guard. I'm in his half guard here. He's, he's, I backstepped. I'm completely out of his full guard. I'm in a kind of half guard. I backstep. I'm in a good position. When somebody tries to guillotine you, keep your back straight and stay out of their guard. Okay, here I'm attempting a leg lock. From the leg lock, I'm going to try to pass. Go back to the leg lock. Again, once again, back to the leg lock. So I'm kind of playing between the two, between a pass and a leg lock. My partner's doing a good job at defending both. I've done this one too many times in the gym. I think the guys know that I go from leg lock to, to pass, to leg lock to pass. So now I'm just going to probably try to smash pass here, like kind of like GSP style, a type of passing I absolutely love, both gi, no gi, and MMA. Again, a very universal type style, uh, very tried and true in MMA. And of course, in uh, no gi jiu-jitsu and jiu-jitsu, this is a very uh, classic formula chest to chest, half guard, pass the knee line, get heavy, cross facing with the left arm, army crawling, crawling, putting pressure on his neck. This is very exhausting for the man on the bottom. Um, a beautiful type of passing system. There's me pushing the knee down. This is the end of the round, so I don't think we're gonna get to see much more action. 
there's me just trying to smash pass. Smash passing can take some time, but it's great because th for the guy on top, because he's saving a lot more energy. The guy on the bottom is really suffering. This is a tough position to be on the bottom. Here's a final leg lock attempt at the end of the bell. Guys, thank you for tuning in. I hope you liked it. Please like, share, and comment, and I'll see you in the next episode.